All right, so we'll start this uh, first video of putting this engine together. Um, in the first video, we honed the cylinder here, okay? Since then, we've taken this engine lube and we've lubed the cylinder. We've lubed the piston and we put the rings on the piston. What was important with the compression rings is that this black one went on top, or the chrome one went on top. The black one was the second compression ring and that the gaps don't line up. The gaps don't line up with the pin bores and the gaps don't line up with the other ring. So they're like straight across from each other in the gaps, okay? I have one gap here and one gap there. Then the oil ring. The oil ring's also important that the gaps don't line up with the pin bore. None of them do, okay? When I install the piston today, this dot points towards the valves. Okay, so that's just important when I put this together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this, the piston ring compressor and I'm gonna compress this. I think I'm gonna slide my gloves on so I'm not donating blood today. It's always good to donate blood. And when you do it all over your engine, you can just hide it as the red engine lube anyways, right? So good stuff. Going to stretch on the ring compressor. I've got all my rings in the correct orientation, so I don't want them to start spinning, okay? I want to keep them in the right orientation. Then I'm going to use these pliers to compress the rings all the way in. I should see no gap, okay, around the outside of the ring compressor. Now, I want this to go into the engine without scratching the cylinder walls. So I'm gonna stand this up, okay? So the connecting rod doesn't have to come in contact with the cylinder walls. I'm gonna squeeze these pliers. These pliers do lock into place, but I find that they're, they're slipping for some reason. So you can see me kind of fighting this. I think I'm gonna be just fine. So after I'm compressed, I'm going to tap down the compressor and then sharp hit, okay? When I get close, I had to give it a sharp hit. The reason I had to give it such a sharp hit was that the rings kind of spring out as soon as they get below the compressor. As soon as they get below the compressor, they want to pop out. They're going to do it really, really quick. So what I'm going to do is going to give it a good sharp hit to get it in there, okay? Now, we already did this once, and we determined that the piston was really hard to move up and down in the cylinder. It's moving fairly good now, okay? So that's good. I'm gonna put the piston at top dead center, really close to the top here, to make room. So now I can put my crankshaft in my engine. My crankshaft has a main bearing, mounted to it the bearing needs oil it needs lubrication so i put the lubrication in there and i'm just going to work that bearing around so the race and the ball bearings inside of there are all oiled up all right anything that i can't really do afterwards so this crankshaft fits in the engine block like so. And this one fits really tight, I've noticed in the past. So I'm gonna just take this dead blow hammer that's got a plastic face. And I'm gonna get this engine old, this crankshaft all the way in. There we go. Crankshaft's in. You would obviously not do that with a steel ball and peen hammer. The crankshaft is the most important part of this entire engine right there with the connecting rod. That's where all the force is. So we wanna make sure that we don't damage it. The connecting rod cap needs to go on next. So I need to line up the connecting rod with the connecting rod journal on the crankshaft. 
I'm going to, and I've already done this, but I'm gonna give it some more lube because you really almost can't have enough most of the time when you're putting together these engines. It's hard to say sometimes when you're rebuilding an engine how long it's gonna be before it's in a vehicle or it's being used. When it's in a vehicle being used, it's lubricated. When it's sitting idle, then it's not being lubricated. So you wanna make sure that you get this everywhere that you need it. But I've already pre-lubed all these parts. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the piston down so I can get this crankshaft in a nice location to install the cap. So, I'm gonna take the cap. Again, I'm gonna lube that. This is the raw journal surface. This is a precision surface. I don't want any hair follicles, okay? I don't want any scratches or anything being a problem on there. This can only go in one direction. This is the oil slinger. It needs to reach towards the bottom of the engine and sling the oil. So this is the only way it can go in. And then I have these special bolts that uh, are just made for this. If you don't have these bolts or you've lost them, you need to order them by application for this engine for this bolt, okay? Don't just go to a bolt bin and take out some random bolt and put it in as your crankshaft one. It, they'll probably break, okay? Gonna run these down with my fingers. Does somebody mind grabbing me one of those socket sets? Please? Somebody from the studio audience? Should I show the studio audience on the video? So years down the road, you'll be like, hey, remember that video you made of us in grade 10? Let me see that. No? You guys make videos yourselves all the time. You don't even care. That's not a socket set. What are you doing? Oliver Long? That's not a socket set. Just that one right over there. Essa, don't you laugh at him and you go grab the socket set. It's right there. There's one right there. Yeah, one of those. I need uh, one that has actually a few sockets in it. I need the most common socket on the face of the planet. The, the one that all the mechanics want. 10 mil, yeah. Okay. So I'm just starting up my quarter inch drive uh, snap-on torque wrench here. I've got the torque specs on the board here and we're going to torque the connecting rod bolt. The connecting rod bolt is this M8 by 125 special bolt and it's 10 foot pounds. So I'm going to torque it to 10. Gonna set my torque wrench. Gotta change the units. It was in Newton meters. Get it to 10. There's five. This thing's very precise, but yet it takes forever to set up. There we go. So there's 10 foot pounds. I need a 10 millimeter quarter inch drive socket. When I'm torquing, I don't like to have a lot of adapters or extensions on if I don't need to, because every adapter or extension is going to kind of affect your torque, okay? The most accurate torque you can have is with your torque wrench, with your hands on the handle properly, and like no extensions, no adapters. If you need them, you need them, but if you don't need them, don't use them. I'm gonna just snug them both up and then I'm gonna torque each one. I don't like to just tighten down one bolt when the other one's not close. So there's my very close. 